Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. If you're not following Breakfast Stream or Steven's vlog channel, you may not be aware that we suddenly had to move. Our landlord gave us like 45 days notice that we needed to leave, so we found this place and I have a brand new room for our studio. So I thought it'd be fun to show you um, my setup and then give you a tour of the finished one when it's done. Um, but right now it's not quite done, so this is what it looks like first. I've moved a lot of stuff in here that I need and a lot of stuff that I don't need. So this is the current room that I'm going to have for my studio. You can see I have my easel, I have my art cart here, um, a lot of stuff in boxes still. Um, so this is just kind of the general room I'm going to have for my studio. And I'm hoping I can also have an art desk in here and my computer desk. The first thing we did was move everything unnecessary and some of my necessary things out of the room. We left all of the major furniture because these need to get figured out where they're going first before I can start to bring in the little stuff. So like this is going to be my computer desk, I have my art desk upside down, I have my storage, my easel, um, so all of the major things are still in the room. This is the shot you're going to see from Al Makes. Um, I have my lights, I have my easel, um, this chair is probably temporary, um, but this is going to be kind of just the art video part of the studio. I have my IKEA storage and my monitor right now so I can see what the camera is seeing. And then over here, these will probably move because they're a little far. Um, I have my carts full of my different art supplies and brushes and they need to get reorganized, but they're here. And then over on this side, I'm going to have my art desk here, um, so I can have some light if I want um, when I'm not filming, and then I'm going to have my computer um, over here for my editing station. And I'm going to get a different office chair because I've been on the hunt for something that doesn't hurt my back as much, and that's going to go here with this. And then this space is going to be my shipping station, so I have all, I'll have all my tape and my boxes um, for all the things I need right here. Now that we've laid it out and I'm happy with it, I have to actually set it up because I need to put my drop cloth down, I have a backdrop I have to put up, and there's some other things I have to do before I can actually use this space and put things away. This is the final layout and we put the drop cloth down. So I have four layers down here. Um, the top layer is just a plain canvas drop cloth. The next layer is also a canvas drop cloth and so is the one below, but this one is doubled up. And then on the final layer is this plastic drop cloth that has plastic on one side and an absorbent pad on the other. Just in case I spill paint, which you can see I sometimes just get a little bit down, it's going to protect the carpet underneath. Next up is my backdrop to make a nice backdrop for my videos, but also to protect the wall. And I used to just have black fabric that I had safe, or push pin to the wall just to kind of put something back there, but I wanted to do it a little bit more professional this time. And normally that uh, backdrop cloth is hung with like a special backdrop frame, but I don't have room for that. So what I decided to do is take that backdrop cloth, use grommets, and then use command hooks and put it up here along the wall. So I'm gonna show you that process too. Step one is making sure you buy a good grommet kit. I bought something that was pretty cheap and it showed, so I've had to make a few changes on how I'm doing the grommets to kind of compensate for the lack of quality in the grommet kit. Now, once you have your grommet kit, um, the first thing I did was I measured my wall. So the wall where this is going is 13 across, it's eight tall, um, and then there's kind of a peak for the ceiling and that's 10 feet tall. So what I figured out was with my fabric, um, kind of how far apart I should space my grommets. And just kind of looking at them visually, I decided on six inches apart. And um, I figured about an inch down from the top of the fabric seemed like a good sturdy space to hang them. I also considered my command hooks and how um, they would fit through this space and making sure that they fit with a good amount of distance here on the actual fabric. Um, and then once I kind of figured all that out, I drew myself a template where I had circles cut every six inches and they were an inch from the top. That way when I got here on my fabric, I could line this up and then I could use a chalk pastel to draw on the fabric where my next circle was going to go. Then if you have a good grommet kit, this is where you would use the cutter to cut it out, but I don't. So I've been using an X-Acto knife um, here on my self-healing mat. And I've just been very carefully 
cutting through the fabric inside of my chalk line. I don't want to cut too far out or um, when I do the actual grommet, it'll um, kind of rip and tear the fabric. It won't sit inside the grommet really well. So smaller is better than bigger. I'm doing this part of the grommet making down on the floor. Um, our house is on a cement slab, so it's pretty sturdy here to do the hammering part of the grommet making instead of on my IKEA desk. So um, the first thing I have down is this wood block. And I couldn't really find anything good at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever that was this size without buying a large board. So I found this in the trim section and it's just this small little rosette that you would put for trim. I'm just using it on the back to kind of protect everything underneath. So this is going down first on the floor. And then the next thing is this die piece. And um, I've noticed that my die piece is two-sided. So if I take the mandrel piece um, and I test it against both, you can see that there's quite a large gap between the two on this side. But when I flip it to the other side, there's less of a gap. So this is the side I wanna be using um, to set my grommets. So I'm putting that side face up here on the wood block. I'm taking one of the bigger pieces of the grommet. These are the sides that I want on the front and setting it face up so the collar is pointing up. Then the fabric goes on next, and I have to kind of stretch it a little bit because my holes are a little small. And then once I have that lined up, I can take one of these washers, these are the small pieces, and I set that on next. And I just kind of make sure that all the fabric is not bunched up around it. The mandrel then holds everything down and then I just take a rubber mallet, or um, this is a dead blow hammer that I can use, and I'm just going to hit the, um, the mandrel to kind of set everything in place. As I'm doing that, what's happening is the um, neck of the first piece of the grommet is starting to curl around, and it's going to crimp this all together. So I'm just gonna keep doing this until it's really, really well crimped. And um, towards the end, it may help to kind of take it off the die and take away this mandrel piece and just do it by itself on the wood block, but it needs to be pretty much done before I do that. The grommets are all done, so I'm going to start marking where all of the command hooks go. I'm using a chalk pastel, just like I do on my canvas, because I can easily wipe it off the wall. So I'm going to measure eight feet up, and then I'll measure out six inches, make a mark, another six inches, make a mark all the way across the wall, so I know where to put all the command hooks, and then I can hang the grommets on those. I've hung up all the command hooks, and in order to get them level, I thought that kind of tying a string with push pins at each end would work really well for keeping a nice level line. However, um, because of the move, I haven't found any of my string, so we used paper towel, and we just tacked it all the way along, making sure that it was nice and level. From there, I used my paper template to make all of my chalk marks, and then on each of the chalk marks, I put one of my command hooks. Once these have set on the wall for just a little bit, I can go ahead and hang the entire backdrop up. I've let these sit for an hour, so I'm just going to line up all of my hooks and all of my grommets and put them here on the wall. Now that I'm set up, I'm finally ready to paint. So let's go on a short tour of the studio. Um, in this closet, um, right now has some of the other stuff for unpacking for the house. So once some of that gets done, some things will kind of move in and out of this area. But this is where I'm going to keep a lot of like my big cardboard boxes, um, backups I have of other things like tape will stay in this closet. Um, other things for crafts like my sewing machine will go in there. Um, so that's that part. This whole area is kind of storage. I have my Ikea shelf, which holds um, all of my backup paint. So that's where I keep all of my tubes. Like if I have yellow, I have all my backup yellows here. And I normally keep one or two of each color, um, just so I have them in case I run out in the middle of a painting. Um, I have some smaller canvases for demoing stuff. I have some art books in here, um, just different mediums. This is kind of like my storage area for stuff I do specifically for painting. Um, up top here, I keep my paper towels and my TV monitor so I can see what the camera is seeing while I'm working. Um, over here, I have my lights and my C-stand. This is kind of what you see behind the camera for Mount Lakes. Like everything that's kind of pointing at me working over there on my easel. And now I have this huge backdrop because before it wasn't that big. So sometimes you could see the wall in the corners of my video. So this works a lot better now for me, that I can, you know, 
shoot everything and when I do my final close-up video I don't have to worry about any wall showing on the sides um, and then behind that I have my carts this one's gonna get changed a little bit like this is my diffusion material for the lights that's not quite up yet but um, I keep all of my paint here and I have it separated kind of by color like I have primaries and secondaries there um, I keep all of my brushes up top here um, so I can kind of say, well, I'm looking for a long handle, I want a bigger one. Um, it just kind of helps me figure out where a brush I'm looking for might be. Um, and then swinging over here to my art desk, I have a little cart um, with pull-out drawers that's going to go here eventually, and it'll house all of my pens and such. But this is kind of my art desk. I have a mat down to protect the table. I'm going to kind of do all of my art here and my, like, Techo bullet journal stuff that I do. This will be that space for it. And I can also clear it off and put my sewing machine here, so I'm really excited about that. And then next to that, I have my Windows computer in the corner because I don't use that as often. It's only for like specific games, and it's kind of hiding down here under the table. But next to that is my main computer, my Mac, where I edit. Um, I do a lot on that for Malmakes. That's kind of my workhorse computer. And then the final station, is this one here on this table. There's some things in here that don't belong yet, but this is kind of my um, canvas finishing and shipping station. So I have like my varnishes, my isolation coats, I have my stay flat mailers. Um, this is mostly gonna house all of that sort of thing for finishing paintings. And that's it for my setup and studio tour. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I'll get back to you in a comment. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Malmakes.